The Russian Defense Ministry has presented a pair of drones it says were obtained following an attack on two of the country's military bases in Syria. The raid reportedly took place on Saturday and involved 13 drones. The defense ministry says the attack required know-how. Russian President Vladimir Putin accused outside powers of aiding the assault, saying its goal was to sabotage agreements between Iran, Turkey and Russia. Putin did not, however, state who exactly was responsible. For more on this, let's turn to Brian Becker, National Coordinator for Thank the Anti-War Answer Coalition. All right, Brian, what's your reaction to the details coming out of this story? It's certainly very bizarre. <laughs> it's a bizarre story. The Russian government asserts that the sophisticated, sophistication needed for aerodynamics and radio electronics is such that it's beyond the capacity of the armed guerrilla groups uh, in Turkey that a state actor uh, was necessary to do this. Then the question would be, what state actor would want to carry out uh, drone attacks? These are 10 drone attacks or 13 drones with maybe 10 bomblets each. In other words, 100 bombs or bomblets on Russian forces. Who has the uh, desire to do that? Uh, certainly the Russian government is in a conflict with the Ukrainian government. The Ukrainian government cons uh, is considered illegitimate by Russia, a consequence of a Western-backed pooch. Uh, the Ukrainian government is also pitching for Western support right now. Uh, we really actually don't know, uh, but of course it is bizarre the fact that it took place in Syria as such. Uh, I think there's a lot of questions that remain to be answered, but the, the Russians are saying pretty confidently these have to be state actors, not non-state actors. Right. And can you set the stage for us right now in Syria? What's happening right now, especially when it comes to those agreements Putin referenced between Turkey, Russia, and Iran, which have managed to uh, uh, reduce hostilities in the country? Well, there were two tracks in the peace process, so-called. One of them wasn't really a peace process. That might be called Geneva, and that included the participation of the United States during the Obama era. Uh, after the United States was clearly proven to be not a good faith, uh, honest broker in those negotiations, a second process in Astana in Kazakhstan, part of the former uh, Soviet Union, became the place where Turkey, Iran, and Russia assumed the role of guarantors to the peace process. They decided whatever their differences, and they do have different agendas, whatever their differences, they were going to make sure that there would be the end of a Syrian war and the beginning of a process for national reconciliation led by Syrians in Syria uh, following the end of military conflict. The United States was outside that process, although invited in as an observer. Russian-Turkey relations have been very treacherous, as we know. They've gone bad, they've gone to even worse, and now they've been repaired. Uh, Turkey is upset right now because of the possibility of the creation of an autonomous zone for the Kurds in the north and the northeast part of Syria. That is considered by the Turkish government, by Erdogan, to be an existential threat because of the large uh, Kurdish population in eastern Turkey. Uh, but those are the parties that are trying, in spite of the complications, to, to oversee the process. And that's not the only thing upsetting Turkey, though. This week, Turkey's foreign minister accused the Syrian government of expanding its territory in Idlib. Why is that province so crucial at this point in the war? And who does it belong to in the first place? Well, of course, Erdogan had dreams of rebuilding the Ottoman Empire a couple years ago when he, along with the United States and Saudi Arabia and Qatar, uh, adopted the mantra, Assad must go, Assad must go. Uh, they were the uh, instrumental to the creation and the development and the, and the growth of ISIS, certainly. And that was all designed to overthrow the Assad government. Uh, to what purpose? Certainly Erdogan thought that some parts of Syria could be incorporated, maybe not formally, but in a de facto way into a larger Turkish sphere of influence. That plan has collapsed. That's not going to happen. Assad is not going to be overthrown. So the Turkish government is now in a quandary. How do they become relevant or stay relevant as a player? Idlib is on their border. Of course, the Turkish government sees Idlib or the, the control of Idlib by armed groups that are hostile to Assad as key to its own relevance in a post-war Syria. Mm. So I think the Turkish government sees Idlib and the guerrillas there in Idlib as something of a proxy. And Russia, of course, targeted the militants, it says, carried out this drone attack, which happened to be in Idlib, though they're saying, Putin is at least saying it wasn't Turkey uh, responsible for aiding uh, that attack. We're unfortunately out of time. Brian Becker, National Coordinator for the Anti-War Answer Coalition, thanks so much. Thank you.